In this lecture, we will install and configure the first component of our lab that is VMware Workstation Player. So first up, we will download the software and get it installed on our laptop. And then the next thing to do is to configure connectivity from our laptop to the actual lab devices. And then that will allow us to connect to them and configure them directly from our normal desktop. I've got the lab build PDF open here and I'll just go to the left here and expand out the bookmarks and go to the VMware Workstation Player install section. So I'm going to follow what the step-by-step -step instructions in the PDF tell me to do and you can follow along with me here. And you see that the first thing to do is to ensure that VMware Virtualization Technology VT is enabled in the laptop's BIOS. So I'm going to reboot now, and when the laptop comes back up again, I'll break into the BIOS, and I'm going to check that the settings there are enabled for VMware. Let's do that now. Okay, so I turn on my PC and when I do this, I'm going to get a prompt to break into the BIOS settings. You can see on my Dell here, it was F2. Once I get in there, I go to the advanced menu and on a Dell, I'm going to go down to virtualization and make sure that is enabled. Now, it might be different on your laptop. It might be known as Vanderpool technology or as virtual machine extensions but it'll be something similar to that. Once that is done, save the changes and boot up. Once you're booted back up again, open up the lab PDF again and back on the VMware install page again, you can see I've got a link here that will take me to the download page. So click on that. And then when this opens, I am going to scroll down until I find VMware Workstation Player. Actually, to save some time, I'll do a Control F to find and search for Player. And there we go. There is VMware Workstation Player. I will click on Download Product. And I'm on a Windows system here, so I'll click on the Windows Download. Then I'm going to start that download. It's not very big, so it shouldn't take too long. It's about 132 megabytes. So when that is done, I will open the download. And this is basically going to be just a next, 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 accepting all of the defaults. So the installer starts to run. And we'll give this a second. And you get the welcome page, click next there, accept the terms in the license agreement and click next. Yes, we do want to install the enhanced keyboard driver, so select that and click next. Then I do want to check for product updates and startup to keep it up to date. I don't want to join the experience improvement program, I'll unselect that, I'll click next. And yes, I do want to have shortcuts for this and click next. Then click on install to begin the installation. So you can see it was a, a pretty standard install there. And we will give this a minute or two to install and then we'll come back. Okay, so that is the install completed. I can click on finish. I'm going to have to restart again, so I will do that as well, and I'll see you when my system has rebooted. Once your laptop is booted back up again, we want to just check that VMware installed okay. So I will go to my start menu and programs and VMware, and just check that VMware Workstation Player opens up okay. Yep, that all looks good. Notice another thing in here, it gives you the option to upgrade to VMware Workstation Pro. So for the lab, we used VMware Workstation Player because that is the free version. A benefit you get if you do install Pro 
is that you can use snapshots in your lab. So that way, when you are configuring things, it makes it easy to roll back to a previous point in time. The pro version does require a paid license. So if you do want to go with the pro version, there's a couple of extra steps that you need to do. It will, the, the lab will work just fine with pro as well. Have a look in the PDF. There's an extra couple of pages there where I tell you the extra steps if you want to use the pro version. Okay, so right now we've got VMware Workstation Player installed okay. The last thing that we need to do is to configure the connectivity. So looking at the lab topology diagram again, you can see that all of the components are going to be running as virtual machines in VMware. And we've got our PC here shown in the diagram as well, which is the PC that we're running VMware on. And we want to be able to configure the lab devices directly from the desktop of our laptop. So I want to be able to install PuTTY on my laptop here and use that to connect to the command line of the devices. I also want to be able to open up a web browser directly on my laptop as well and use that to connect to the GUI management tools. So to be able to do that, I need to set up the connectivity from VMware to those virtual machines. So to do that, I go to control panel. So let me open that up. And then when control panel opens, make sure you're viewing by icons, not by categories. And then click on the network and sharing center. And then change adapter settings. And then because we've installed VMware, you're gonna see you've got a few extra network adapters in here now. And the one that we want to configure is VMNet1. But I'll just show you the lab topology diagram again. You can see it, VMNet1 is my management network. My ONTAP clusters are going to have their adapters connected to the management network as well. So on my PC here, I'm going to give it the IP address 172.23.1.10 which is the, in the VMNet network, uh, VMNet1, and also my ONTAP clusters, their management interfaces are also going to be in the 172.23.1.0 network, so that gives my PC direct connectivity to them. Also, the VIOS router has got an interface in the management network as well, so I've got connectivity to the VIOS router, and I'm also going to configure a static route on my PC here so that I can get to all of the other networks, such as 172.23.4 and 172.23.5. And that's going to give me connectivity to my clients as well. So let's do that now. I will go back to the network settings and right click on that VMNet1 adapter, which is on my laptop. Go to the properties. And then in here, I go to the TCP IP version 4 properties, click on properties there, and click on the option to use the following IP address. And the IP address I'm going to use is 172.23.1.10. And the subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. Now, I'm not going to configure a default gateway here because that would try to send all my traffic along this path. And if I did that, it would break the internet connectivity on my laptop. So I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to set a default gateway to send all routes here. I'm going to do a separate static route at the command line in a second, that's going to give me connectivity to the other lab networks. So that's all I need to do here to get my laptop onto the management network. So I click on OK there and close it. And then I'm going to go back to the PDF again. And I'll go to the VMware install section. And let's just make the, the zoom to fit the height. And I'll make sure the page display is single page. Okay, that's good. I'll scroll through a few pages here. This was the network settings that I just configured for the IP address on that VMNet1 adapter. And the last thing to do is to add this static route. So to do that, I will go down to my search box again, go CMD, don't click enter yet. 
it will show up in my search here. Right click on that. I need to run it as the administrator. And that's going to open up a command line window in Windows here. And I'll just make this a bit smaller so I can see the command to enter. And the command that I want to enter is route add 172.23.0.0. And then the mask is 255.255.0.0. When you're entering this command, do not forget to put in that mask keyword. If you don't say mask, then it's not going to work. So this is for all of the other networks that are in the lab, like where my clients are. And then the next top address is 172.23.1.254. That is the interface on my VIOS router that is in the management network. And then dash P to make this a permanent route. Hit enter and I get OK. So that's all done. I've configured the network adapter on my laptop to connect it to the management network. Then I've added a route going through the management network to hit my VIOS router. It gives me connectivity to everything else in the lab. I've still got my normal default gateway on my laptop, which is going through my wireless adapter here, that gives me my internet connectivity. So don't worry, when you do set up the lab, it's not going to break any of your other networking settings. You'll still have connectivity to your corporate networks, also to the internet, either from home or from the office. Okay, that was everything for the VMware player install. I will see you in the next lecture where we'll carry on with the lab setup.